With the new logical editor improvements in Cubase 12, you'll be able to work faster and create your own custom workflows for any given task. Let me show you. The logical editor has always been one of the most powerful features in Cubase, and now it's even better. First, let me show you the project logical editor. To access the project logical editor, you go project and then project logical editor. And as you can see, now we have two options there. We have setup and apply preset. So if you want to apply a preset very easily, you can just click on apply preset and then a list of presets will appear here and you can choose the preset you want to use. But if you want to check how these presets were created or even create your own presets, you can just go and select setup. And here you can of course load presets, but you can also create your own. And you can already see that the project logical editor has a brand new look. We have new preset browser pop-ups, new event target filters, new event transform actions, new apply process types, and we also have pre and post commands. Finding a preset is very easy with the new project logical editor. All you need to do is click right here. And as you can see, we have different categories. So we have the factory presets and we also have the user presets. And if you already had some presets that you had created, they will all be here. For example, in my case, I can find my old presets in earlier presets right here, and I can find all my previous logical editor presets. The presets are also searchable. So if I want to find a preset that contains drum in its name, I can just type drum and I can find all the presets that I have created or are already in the factory presets that contain the word drum. One really powerful way to use the project logical editor is for manipulating automation. So let's say I have these really complex automation curves here, I can go here and select the decrease volume of selected track by 1 dB inside cycle. So let's select this one and now we have loaded this preset. Now I can select this channel and I can hit apply and check what happens to the automation. And I can hit apply several times and I'm always going to decrease this automation by 1 dB. That's extremely useful, say, if you have created some automation for a vocal and you want to reduce the automation curve by 1 dB, that's very, very easy to do. And it goes without saying that all these presets you can assign to key commands and you can have them accessible very easily. Let's try a different preset now and let's go to the mixing category and let's say I want to bypass the insert effects for a specific number of channels. So as you can see, I've selected some of our drums here and I can go to mixing, toggle inserts bypass of selected tracks. So when I do this, you will see that when I hit apply, all the inserts are bypassed for this selected channel. So I can toggle very easily and see what I've done with my plugin processing. And there are tons of other things that you can do. For example, you can perform tempo and signature operations very easily. You can have tempo inside the cycle, for example. You can do rerouting of your tracks very easily. You can change the visibility of different types of tracks. For example, you might want to hide all your MIDI tracks that you can do very easily with the project logical editor. And that's extremely useful for super busy, super large projects where you have tons of tracks this will save you lots of time. Now, in order to perform any action using the logical editor with MIDI, you can just select a MIDI part, go to MIDI, logical editor, and now you can again choose between setup and apply preset. Now, let me go to apply preset this time and now we can get the preset list up. Now, very quickly, let me play this part for you and I'm going to show you what we can do with the logical editor. Now, let's try one of the presets. I'm going to go to the factory presets. I'm going to go to musical context in this case, and I'm going to select add sub bass to chords. And let's see what this does. And as you can see, the logical editor immediately added a sub bass note to this part. Let's open this in our key editor. And as you can see, we have our chords here and the logical editor added a nice sub bass. Now let's select this chord right here and let's say I want to change this from major to minor. I can just go here, change major chord to minor chord, apply preset 
and straight away we can change our chord from major to minor very easily with one click. Let me show you some other things we can do with the logical editor. Let's play this part here. And let's say I want to make this part half time. All I need to do is go to my event types and say double tempo. And now I can apply the preset and immediately we have double tempo. Now let's say I want to make this part a little bit more dynamic. Maybe I want to add some accents on the downbeat. So I can go to the notes velocity category and say I want to have 10% of volume to downbeat. And check out what happens in my velocities here. And there we go, now I have an accent in the downbeats. Let's apply this a few more times and I can make this accent even more pronounced. Let's have a listen now. How about we create a crescendo? I can go here to my crescendo in cycle range preset. I'm going to set my cycle markers correctly and I'm going to apply the preset and check what happens to my velocities here. And I can apply it multiple times, make it really, really dramatic. Let's have a listen. And as you can hear, this is really complex MIDI editing that I did there and you can do this all with one click instead of going in each note and editing individually. And there are tons of presets like this, so make sure you check them out. Another thing that it's very easy to do with a logical editor is extracting elements from a drum part. For example, I have this drum part here. And maybe I want to replace the kick drum or I want to reinforce the kick drum with a sampler track, for example, that I have right here. Let me show you how easy it is to do that. I can just go here in the logical editor, type kick, and then I can say extract kick drum to new track. So I hit apply preset and there we go. Now I have the kick drum to a brand new part. And maybe I can copy this to my sampler track where I have a brand new kick drum here and just play it. So you can imagine how powerful this is for production, for layering and all these things. And we also have many improvements when it comes to the input transformer. And the input transformer is a really powerful tool because it allows you to manipulate your MIDI messages. For example, maybe I have a keyboard that transmits aftertouch and it confuses some of my VST instruments. I can go here, type aftertouch, and I can select filter aftertouch. And that means that whenever Cubase sees an aftertouch message, it's going to ignore it. And this we can also select per track. So if I wanna go to this drum instrument here and I want to make sure that it's not going to be affected by aftertouch, I can go here to input transformer and select project. And now this preset is going to be applied to that specific track. And we can do many different other things. For example, some MIDI keyboards don't have a mod wheel. You can set up a different controller and turn it into a CC1. So you can have mod wheel even on keyboards that don't have a mod wheel or vice versa. So if you're a power user and you want to create your own presets and workflows in the logical editor, or you just want to explore all the amazing presets that are in there in Cubase 12, I'm pretty sure that with these new features, you'll find something that will make your life way easier. Enjoy. Enjoy.